Also, both standards have a requirement to show <laughs> traceability throughout the life cycle. Traceability is just what are the outputs that we've just seen in the design and documentation set. But it's such an important one that it's worth drawing out and listing separately. To my knowledge, agile methods do not even consider traceability. Well, the two issues above, the design and the documentation issue and the traceability issue, have been noted by other investigators, as I'll come to later. I believe there should be a third. The requirements of DO 178B and EN 501-8 uh, standards for independence in, in some of the software development roles. For example, the tester must be independent of the implementer. An implementer shouldn't test his own code. That's why I made test-driven development an amber issue above. I turn now, I think you can just read that. I turn now to some opinions expressed in the literature about agile methods and safety critical software. Admittedly, opinions don't constitute any sort of proof or hard, or hard evidence, but nevertheless, it's interesting to see what people say. I won't repeat every quote here, just a few selected ones. <clears throat> Chanu notes, as I have above, that the design and the documentation issue and the traceability issue are important. He says, without any, without any adaptation, XP's set of by the book practices does not provide the formalism and the proofs required for certification inspections. Documentation must be, con must be considered as part of the product. He also says we've added a continuous traceability practice. Uh, a study carried out within the ITEA project, that's Information Technology for European Advancement, also concluded that traceability is an issue. The study noted that in safety critical systems, emphasis is placed on requirements traceability and thus extra documentation is required. The study also concluded that for large and complex systems, a predefined architecture is needed. Refactoring is not enough, a design is needed. Martin Thomas is clearly on the skeptic side. <clears throat> he thinks that agile methods are not suitable for safety critical software and instead prefers the hard path of Z and Spark. Somerville is more positive, saying that <coughs> crit critical systems engineering needs agile approaches to development. <coughs> but he also concedes that XP includes a set of good practices that have the potential to, contrib to contribute to critical systems engineering. But some of these need to change, and new practices need to be included in the XP process. Uh, Stephen Rakitin is the most skeptical with a rather damning verdict. He says, it seems to me that this is nothing more than an attempt to legitimize hacker behavior. I wouldn't go as far as that. <coughs> My second question, if you remember, was what evidence is there out there in the literature on the effectiveness of agile methods? Instead of opinions, do we have hard data? Well, I carried out an extensive search across the web and I found just two papers with any data in, though both of these were themselves surveys of one sort or another. Abrahamson, in his own search, found 36 papers with, with some form of data in them. The ITEA project, that's the Information Technology for European Advancement project, produced a deliverable that contained three studies. Abrahamson uh, summarized the results of the 36 papers which he found as, as follows. He found a reduction in release time of 20% to 75%. A pre-release reduction in defects of 40% to 65%. A post-release reduction in defects of 30% to 40%. A producti productivity improvement a 15% to 70%. But I think um, I didn't read all of those 36 papers that Abrahamson reviewed, but um, I think, I suspect 
some of the data was perhaps um, slightly anecdotal and <coughs> not gathered with strict metrics, but I don't really know. The ITEA deliverable was less quantitative. One of the three studies in the deliverable was an online questionnaire. There are 131 replies to the questionnaire. The four most relevant questions and their responses, the responses to those questions were, question one, has the adoption of agile processes altered the quality of applications? 36% of respondents said the quality was significantly better. 53% said the quality was better. 11% said the quality was unchanged. 1% said it was somewhat worse. The second question was, has the adoption of agile processes altered the cost of development? 5% said it was much less expensive. 44% said it was less expensive. 46% said it was unchanged. 5% said it was more expensive. Question three, has the adoption of agile processes altered the level of business satisfaction with the software? 26% said significantly better, 57% said better, 16% <coughs> said unchanged, and another 0%, 1% there. Last of the four most important question, questions, what proportion of projects are appropriate for agile processes? Only 16% said all, 50% said most, 22% said half, 7% said some, 5% none. But crucially, that study doesn't say how many of the respondents were referring to safety critical projects. So, to sum up my presentation then, I've examined whether <coughs> agile methods are compatible with the production of safety critical software. And I presented evidence from the literature of the benefits of agile methods, particularly as regards safety critical software. My conclusions are that agile methods in general need to be adapted for use in the area of safety critical software development. Certification requirements mean that necessary documentation must be incorporated into any, into any agile process selected. Traceability and role independence must also be considered. The logical extension of agile methods to the safety critical world could require continuous certification. Release cycles are likely to be longer in safety critical projects, but there's no reason not to, not to move towards the concept of frequent release cycles with an on-site customer. But I think we need to gather more evidence using reliable standard metrics, and certainly Silvertina's Agile Club will be willing to assist in this work. Thank you. <coughs>